volunteer fans are among the greatest college football fans in the country. Yeah, that checkerboard end zone as we look at it here is a tradition with the volunteers. It adds to the colorfulness of the afternoon. Tennessee will kick off. John Bexport, as you look at the officials for today's game. And Larry Kennedy and Harrison Houston are the deep man for the University of Florida. A look at the series record between the two clubs. They have not played very often through the years. But now with realignment, Tennessee and Florida will play every year. And it should be, become one of the great rivalries in Southeastern Conference football. Joey Chapman with the kickoff for Tennessee, and Larry Kennedy is out of the end zone to down it. That's about as good of a kick return defense as you can get as we look at Florida backs and receivers. Matthews and Rhett, two great offensive players. Kelvin Randolph, a solid fullback. Houston and Jackson, great wide receivers. Greg Keller had a couple of receptions last weekend against Kentucky. On the offensive line, the freshman, true freshman, Reggie Green, who's along the side, Dexter Smith, Dan Kraft, Jim Watson, and Ryan Taylor. The crowd is on its feet in Knoxville, Tennessee, for the first play of the game. Eric Rett hammers out two yards against Tennessee's defense. George Kidd made the tackle. Todd Kelly, good pass rusher along the front line. J.J. Surlis, Jeff Tullis, James Wilson, the front four. Tennessee linebackers led by junior Reggie Ingram out of Memphis, Tennessee. George Kidd made the tackle just a moment ago. McCleskey was a wide receiver last week against Georgia. He has been moved to strong safety. Eric Rett looking to turn the corner. Got a good block from Randolph. And got four yards out to the 26-yard line. McCleskey, number six for Tennessee. The converted wide receiver was there to make the stop. There he is, J.J. McCleskey, a senior from right here in Knoxville. And he caught 35 passes last year for the volunteer offense. David, the Gators had worked earlier this week on going on a silent count because they knew they would have problems hearing quarterback uh, Shane Matthews throughout the afternoon. So he's hardly verbalizing the count at all. A silent count on offense. The handoff went to Rhett, and Rhett battered his way for a first down out to the 32-yard line. Good job of play faking by Shane Matthews. Ben Talley made the tackle for Tennessee. Looks like a draw. Tennessee expecting the pass from this multi-dimensional Gator offense. Look at Reggie Green driving Kelly to the outside, throwing him down with his strength. The 300-pound freshman doing an excellent job right there on the draw. Gators are first and 10 from their 32. Again, Rhett with the football, and Rhett gets four or five more. He was tackled by 41, Reggie Ingram, who is Tennessee's leading tackler after two weeks of the season with 16 stops. Rhett, the junior out of Pembroke Pines, off to a great start last week against Kentucky with 193 yards rushing and seven receptions. It is second down for the Gators. We have a problem with the clock. 25 second clock is going to be reset. And now we're ready to resume play from Tennessee. If the Gators have some success on their first drive of the afternoon, it'll certainly take this Tennessee crowd out of the ball game somewhat. Rhett carrying the ball again, and he breaks free. Into Tennessee territory as Rhett goes out of bounds at the 44-yard line. Jason Parker, the freshman, may have saved the touchdown. A 14-yard run for Rhett. David, that's uh, the sweet play that had so much success against Kentucky last week. Getting Eric Rhett outside, you pull the guard, you lead with the fullback. As we see the pitch, Rhett gets a chance to 
break loose down the sideline, but that play's going to come back because of a violation on the Gator offense. That was a holding penalty called against the Florida Gators, so it'll come back. While we have a brief pause in the action, we'd like to extend our get well wishes to Keith Allo, the producer for the Gator Television Network, who's been ill this week. We understand Keith is feeling much better, and we look forward to working with him in Starkville in a week and a half. A lot of fills on our schedule. Knoxville, Starkville, Nashville, Jacksonville, Tallahasseeville. How about Gainesville? <laughs> Boy, what a tough break for the Gator offense. They were first down in Tennessee territory. Now they're back inside their own 30. Matthews flushed out of the pocket. Down he goes to the 30-yard line. Jeff Cullis and J.J. Sterlitz are there to make the tackle. Well, Todd Kelly put pressure on Matthews that time. Somehow, the tight end wound up trying to block Todd Kelly and wasn't able to get the job done. Matthews had to step up immediately as he felt the pressure from the outside, and that destroyed the pass play. Jackson and Houston are split wide to the left on third down and 13. Matthews throws the ball away. He was pressured again by Todd Kelly. You'll see 58 Todd Kelly on the back side using the spin move on the young freshman tackle. Lean to his outside, then spun quickly inside. That's a very difficult maneuver to block, and Reggie Green wasn't quite able to get it done, and Matthews had to throw the ball away. And the Gators do not score on their first possession. They have been very, very effective on first possession in recent games, but Tennessee shuts them down with the help of a holding penalty. Shane Edge will punt it. And Sean Summers stands deep for Tennessee. Summers from his 24-yard line. And a penalty flag goes down on top of the play. Myrick Anderson made the tackle. Now let's see what the yellow flag is about. Well, I say, Clip, it looked like there was contact from the backside at the point where the tackle was being made, and that's really going to hurt Tennessee. They would have the ball on their own 30, but not to be with that penalty. Two penalties hurting each team early in this ball game. The holding penalty stopping the Gators' offensive effort, and here on the specialty team, there's a clip by Tennessee. Ball will be spotted half the distance to the goal from yeah, just inside the 30. In the back, 10 yards during the return, first down. Actually, a 10 yard mark off. Ball spotted just inside Tennessee's 20 yard line. Timeout on the field, 11.46 to play in the first period. Nope. Shane Edge got off a 46 yard punt. Tennessee had a three yard return, but uh, also a 10 yard penalty on a clip. Let's see if we can pick it up on the replay. Yeah, right there uh, in the back, number 93, Scott Galen, a linebacker. A little too aggressive on the uh, punt return, and Tennessee will have the ball just inside their 20. Tennessee's offense led by the sophomore quarterback Keith Schuler, Aaron Hayden a fine tailback, Brunson, Fleming and Faulkner two good wideouts, and Robert Todd a big tight end, a 6'5", 257 pound a senior. Offensive line Mike Stoll has considerable experience 14 starts this will be his 15th start here today against Florida. He's out of Meridian, Idaho. Miller, Spivey, Smith and Gordon round out the offensive line. There's Heath Schuler. The sophomore from Bryson City, North Carolina, North Carolina State high jump champion as a senior at Bryson City High School. As we mentioned, he's gotten rave reviews uh, because of his ability to not only pass the football effectively, but to really challenge the defense with his running ability. Carlton Miles, a big factor last weekend against Kentucky. Miles playing with a pinched nerve in his neck at 10 tackles against the Wildcats, and he's Ready to go this afternoon. And so are the Volunteers offensively led by the sophomore Heath Schuler. Hayden and Brunson in the backfield. This is Aaron Hayden 
and Mark Campbell wraps him up as he crosses the 20-yard line. And let's take a look at Tennessee, or rather Florida's defensive front line. Henry McMillan, the sophomore, Ellis Johnson, Mark Campbell, Kevin Carter, a sophomore out of Tallahassee, rather a freshman out of Tallahassee, Carter. The linebacking core led by Carlton Miles, the senior from Daytona Beach. Monty Groh, a player with a lot of experience at the Gatorback and the secondary. The sophomore Larry Kennedy, a real leader back there, and senior Will White, an All-American performer at safety. This offense features the tailback as well as the running ability of Schuler, the quarterback. Ellis Johnson was plugging the gap. Hayden tried to hit the line of scrimmage, and Johnson was there. Ellis Johnson, a true sophomore, up front for the Gators. You'll see him from his defensive tackle position, actually on the other side of the ball, but he scrapes along the line of scrimmage with his speed and athletic ability to make the tackle at the line of scrimmage. Excellent hustle by the defensive tackle. Again, Culpepper and McCoy are gone from that front four, so new bodies on the field wearing the orange and blue for the Gators. Third down and reverse to Faulkner. It didn't fool anybody. Tennessee loses four or five yards as Kevin Carter, the sophomore from Tallahassee, was there to make the play with Mark Campbell. Gracious, if Schuler had kept that football, he'd still be running untouched, but the Gator defense got so much penetration at the offensive line of scrimmage, that's what destroyed that play. You cannot allow penetration that deep and try and run the reverse at the same time. Tom Hutton to kick the ball away. Willie Jackson waits and makes the catch at Florida's 40-yard line. He got a good block from Ed Robinson, but now Tennessee's got him surrounded and they take him out of bounds to the 43 yard line a 38 yard kick for Tom Hutton who's averaging 40.2 yards per punt 940 to play in the first period still no score with Florida taking possession of the football for the second time Knoxville Tennessee Neyland Stadium no score in the football game still early in the first period Sports Channel brings you a college Double header next Saturday with exciting football action. Lehigh against Cornell and West Virginia at Virginia Tech, only on Sports Channel. Check local listings for availability in your area. Well, with the exchange of punts, the Gators come out the winner in terms of field position right now. Great field position outside their 40 yard line on their second offensive series of the afternoon. Really, the Gators moved the ball uh, pretty well. It was that holding penalty that really destroyed the first series. Gators came out running the football on their first possession. And Eric Brett was finding uh, some gaping holes in there, but the holding penalty set the ball club back and they had to punt it away. The Gators had scored on six of their last seven first possessions. But not today against Tennessee. Darrell Frazier is in at tailback along with Rhett in the backfield penalty flag goes down as Matthews takes the snap Todd Kelly definitely jumps across the line line of scrimmage here but Reggie Green has to maintain his poise and not move see the defender has a right to get back you'll see at the right of your screen Kelly's gonna jump He's allowed to do that, but the tackle cannot. He has to stay in his stance. Let them call offsides on the defense instead. Melvin Randolph now in the backfield with a rep. Out of the eye. The pass is to the fullback, Randolph, and Randolph rambles to midfield. The Gators will have a second and two. After a 13-yard gain, George Kidd, uh, the redshirt freshman, made the tackle. Rarely is the fullback the primary receiver. The Gators have had such success getting the balls to the wide receivers and Eric Rett, the tailback. They seldom throw the football, uh, the football to the fullback. Eric Rett gets the first down as he picks up three or four more yards into Tennessee territory. 
J.J. McCleskey was there to make the tackle for the Volunteers. McCleskey only 5'8", 172 pounds. He has played defense before here at Tennessee, but he was so talented they moved him to offense. As you mentioned uh, earlier, David, he caught 35 passes last year for the Volunteers, but they needed his help on defense early here in the 92 season. Well, he had played cornerback. He's been called to play strong safety today against Florida. First down for the Gators. Matthews with plenty of time, and he finds his man, Harrison Houston, inside the 30 to the 29-yard line of Tennessee. Tennessee dropping back in a deep zone, allowing the Florida wide receivers to get some depth and hook up in front of them. 17 yards per catch by Harrison Houston, who had a great opening ball game against Kentucky. Look at the depth. Houston gets behind the linebacker, and the defenders are just too deep to destroy the play right there. The Gators come with one running back, Tony Davis, the freshman from Chipley. Houston again and Houston has another Florida first down Tennessee's defense last week gave up almost 18 yards per completion against Georgia Houston two quick catches on this drive for the Gators well, Harrison Houston leading the SEC currently in catches per game look at the pressure this Florida offense puts on the defense yeah twin receivers to the short side of the seal uh, short side of the field actually and Houston takes a big bump right there after catching the football. Matthews for Houston. Almost a great catch in the end zone. Off of his fingertips and incomplete. The ball was perfectly thrown as well. Jason Parker had was one step behind Houston. Looks like he got one hand on it, but was not able to get them both around the football but Matthews was right on target there giving his receiver the chance to make a great grab Tony Davis still the tailback out of the eye Matthews on a play action Matthews will keep and out of bounds he goes with a penalty flag coming in on top of the play at about the five-yard line. I think it was McCleskey that took him out of bounds, and McCleskey may be the penalized player for Tennessee. That's a tough call for the defender. He's chasing the quarterback from behind. He does not know if Matthews is going to step out of bounds or not. We'll get a chance, I think, to look at it again, but nonetheless, a critical penalty for Tennessee. Matthews was within a yard or two of the first down marker as he stepped out of bounds and then was hit from behind. That's where the flag was thrown. It certainly wasn't flagrant, but nonetheless, he was hit as he was out of bounds. Personal foul against Tennessee. And the crowd here reacts naturally. Yeah, see, it's, it's a little bit of a push. That's really a cheap call. Uh, well, I don't think it was on McCleskey. You I don't think, think so? I think they called it on it was uh, 90, wasn't it? Yeah, it was uh, Ben Talley. Yeah, it was Talley. But he, he really kind of just gave him a baby push. He realized he was out of bounds. But uh, here come the booze. Take another look. I think it's number 90 that you'll see. There's Matthews out of bounds. And Talley, that was a late hit. McCleskey, that was after the fact. There was no foul, uh, no penalty on McCleskey. It was on number 90, Ben Talley. Matthews had already stepped out of bounds, and then two or three yards on up the field, Talley hit him. Well, we mentioned how important it was to take this crowd out of the game as early as possible, if possible, and the Gators have a great chance to do that right now by jumping out to an early lead. Florida will be spotted at the six-yard line. They'll have it first and goal with seven minutes and 23 seconds left in the first period. Gators come with two tight ends. 
And the pitch comes to Tony Davis. Davis steps out of bounds at the two-yard line. There's a case of Florida just trying to outnumber Tennessee with more bodies on the right side of the field. And the offense really has a disadvantage right now if this crowd will ratchet up their volume because uh, the Gators really can't come off the ball that hard if they can't hear the quarterback and they have to watch the ball being snapped, which is the same thing the defenders have to do. Generally, you have the edge if you know the snap count. But everybody's going on ball movement. Here comes the noise level. And here comes Eric Rett into the Florida backfield. Again, two tight ends. And a handoff on the end around to Houston. Tennessee stuffs the play at the five-yard line. Gators hoping to catch Tennessee being more aggressive on defense, perhaps even blitzing and trying to get that little reverse outside. But everyone... On the backside, stayed at home. Houston had nowhere to go. They contained him. Then the interior defense was able to swarm to the ball. Good play by Jeff Tullis, the senior. And now there's confusion in Florida's offense, and Shane Matthews disgustedly falls for a timeout. That stops the clock with six minutes and 40 seconds to play in the first period. No score, but Florida threatening. No score in the game in the first period from Knoxville, Tennessee. Gators at the five-yard line, and they'll have third down coming up. Be sure to catch Gator action on Sports Channel Tuesday, 12 o'clock. Florida football with Steve Spurrier on Thursday at 6.30, the Gator hotline. And then next Friday, October the 2nd, 8 p.m., Gator football against the Bulldogs of Mississippi State from Starkville. Check local listings for Sports Channel and Gator Vision coverage in your area. That's going to be a good one in Starkville. Jackie Sherrill has got that football team playing tough every week. Gators have their hands full here against Tennessee. Scoreless football game, 6.40 left in the period. And Florida sitting at Tennessee's five-yard line. Third down play coming up for the Gators. No running back in this offensive formation. No running back behind Shane Matthews. I think they might put the ball in the air on this play. No, Matthews tried to keep it, didn't fool anybody. Nice play defensively by number 48, J.J. Surlitz, senior from Mount Pleasant, Pennsylvania. Well, the formation tries to sell the pass in advance, spread everybody out. Matthews takes a three-step drop. But it was the interior defensive line that smelled out that quarterback draw and snuffed it out for no gain. Bart Edmiston will try to Put three points on the board for Florida. And Edmiston misses the chip shot. 22-yard kick. Edmiston was 0 for 2 last week. And there was some concern in the Gator camp about Florida's place-kicking game. The freshman misses another one. Yeah, that wasn't close. It was just uh, wide right all the way. Didn't fade at all. It just was kicked wide right. And you know, the next time young Mr. Edmiston is called upon to try and hit a field goal, the pressure just continues to build on the young man. Tennessee has the football for the second time in the period. They ran only four plays, and one of them was a punt on their first possession. So Florida has had the football for most of the first quarter, but still there is no score in the game. Volunteers come with three wide receivers and two backs out of the eye. Hayden, the ball carrier, and he is wrapped up near the line of scrimmage. Carlton Miles, Henry McMillan there to make the stop for Florida. One of the things the skater defense has been able to do traditionally is stop the running game and 
Tennessee features the running game. They feature the tailback. Occasionally, we mentioned Schuler has the talent to pick up big yardage himself. We look at Aaron Hayden, who alternates out of that tailback position. This time, the fullback, Mario Brunson, gets the call, and Brunson gets a couple of tough yards across the 25 to about the 27-yard line. He was tackled by middle linebacker Ed Robinson. Brunson, a, a talented fullback, 245 pounds, generally the blocker for the tailback, much like the Gator offense features the tailback with the fullback called upon to block, block, and block. Charlie Garner has checked in at tailback. He's the only running back on third and three. Hand off to Garner. He's got great speed to the 45-yard line. Dell Spear saved the touchdown probably for Florida. Now the Gators walked up their outside linebackers right on top of the line of scrimmage. They had their secondary man for man, and if you can get a crack, Carlton Miles just overran the play. He really wasn't blocked. He just misread the read on the hole and just simply overran the ball carrier just a shade and allowed Tennessee to crack the interior and pick up a big first down. Give some of the credit, though, to that guy right there, Garner. He got to the hole so quickly. I think Miles was surprised to see a running back in that hole that quickly. McMillan makes the stop on Garner. This guy is, uh, a lot of people around here think he might be the best of their three tailbacks. He's a junior college transfer out of Falls Church, Virginia, averaging 7.3 yards per carry in their first two games against southwestern Louisiana and Georgia. Was not involved in spring practice. Uh, transferred, as you mentioned, this fall. They really didn't know what to expect. But he winds up sharing a lot of duty in the tailback position. Schuler on a little rollout. And the pass was almost intercepted by Dell Spear, intended for Ronald Davis, the sophomore from Memphis. Ben Hanks, the bandit back, also in coverage deep down the sideline. Schuler's going to roll to his right, gets a lead block by the tailback. Then it's a throwback to the backside as he tries to streak the wide receiver down the sideline. But Del Spear and Hanks there to make the play. Now third and ten for the Vols. Schuler has good protection but cannot complete the pass. The fullback, Mose Phillips, was the intended receiver. Now he was not looking for the pass, and Tennessee has fourth and ten. Yeah, he was not the primary receiver. Excellent coverage on the wideouts in the secondary prevented Schuler from going where he wanted to go, so he tried to dump the ball off and get something, but the fullback, as you mentioned, wasn't, wasn't even looking for the ball. Tom Hutton, left-footed sophomore, gets it away for Tennessee. Willie Jackson. From his 16-yard line. Makes a couple of volunteers miss him, and then a penalty flag again goes down late. Generally, that'll be a personal foul on looks the like defensive the, team. Looks like the punter, Hutton. Uh, number 43. I, I think believe. you're right. 40-yard kick, 12-yard return for Jackson. No. No, it's going to go against Florida. We have an illegal block in the back. 10-yard penalty on the return. First down. Here's Black. Hutton hustling downfield. Yeah, he didn't clip anybody. He got hit in the back by Lawrence Hatch. But he certainly hustled downfield, didn't he? An aggressive play by the Tennessee putter. Let's check to the sideline with Steve Babbitt. Dave, the last offensive series, you saw Tony Davis into a couple of plays because Eric went a slight twist of the ankle. He's okay. I think he's back in right now. Gators have the ball at their 12-yard line. It's Tony Davis, the tailback, rather than Rhett. And the shovel pass does not fool Tennessee. Yeah, Todd Kelly from the outside almost 
picked that one off himself watching from the bottom of your screen he takes an inside move on Reggie Green which is the most dangerous move a defender can take on the tackle on that particular play Tennessee has rebuilt this defensive line much like the Gators and Kelly is a young man who just seems to get better every week and off on the delay to the fullback Chris Bilkey and Bilkey picks up five out to the 20 yard line and will bring up third down and six Reggie Ingram wrapped him up for the volunteers I think what Reggie Green the young offensive tackle is seeing that he's got a defender that not only can use his speed to the outside but that will gamble and take the inside on him as well so he's not exactly sure where Kelly's gonna come on the pass rush Big third down play for the Gators. Matthews airs it out for Houston. And the pass is batted down at the 45-yard line. And a fine defensive play by Tavio Henson. Obviously, the Gators felt like they could take advantage of Tennessee's secondary. And Henson just made an outstanding play one-on-one -on -one with Harrison Houston. Matthews. Hit in the back that time from Kelly as he released the ball, but they're trying to go deep, obviously. Getting the ball to Houston. The Gators have generated a lot of offensive yardage here in the first quarter, but not able to come up with the, the big, deep bomb. Shane Edge punting for the second time today. Tennessee gets to it. The Volunteers block the punt. It looked like Tracy Smith, number three, had got it. It was Smith, and he was untouched, it seemed. From the punter's right, your left, there's Smith, who was not touched at all by the punt blocking unit. Looks like they ran a game to the right side of the Gators formation to Tennessee's left, and he came in untouched. A huge turnover for the Volunteers. They used the turnover last week to beat the Georgia Bulldogs as they got, I believe, six turnovers in that ball game. Four fumbles and two interceptions. Now the pressure is on Florida's defense. Schuler a short drop. This is where he is really dangerous, but Kevin Carter takes Schuler out of bounds at the 12-yard line. Good job by Florida's secondary. Schuler had all kinds of time, but still could not find an open receiver. There's a look at the sophomore from Tallahassee. Having a big year in his second season with the Gators. He's got great quickness, this Carter. For a man his size. Schuler was an elusive ball carrier last week against the Bulldogs. And they put him in a rollout position. Looking for a block on the corner. And Schuler scores for Tennessee. <laughs> He's Schuler on the sprint out to the wide side of the field to his left. Gets an excellent block. In the open field, dips to the inside, threatens the Gator defense inside, then bounces outside with his speed to skate down the sideline and turn that block punt into a Tennessee touchdown. Volunteers take a first quarter lead. John Bexfort will try the extra point. And the Volunteers lead the Gators seven to nothing. To the left of your screen, watch the lead block by the tailback, Hayden. He's going to take out. Ed Robinson gets take out on the uh, crack block. Hayden leads downfield on Monty Grow. There's the dip inside, the bounce outside. And with the speed the quarterback has, Schuler gives Tennessee the six. We expected a high-scoring game, but the first points are not put up on the board until the 128 mark in the first period. A 12-yard scoring drive for the Volunteers. They set it up with a blocked punt by Tracy Smith. An 
opportunistic Tennessee football team, which defeated the Georgia Bulldogs last Saturday on uh, the strength of Georgia mistakes, and they've jumped out to a 7-0 lead on the strength of a Florida mistake here in the first period. A crowd of 97,137 here at Neyland Stadium. A large portion of them Tennessee fans, and they're thoroughly enjoying this football game at this time with their volunteers on top, seven to nothing. Kennedy and Houston are the deep men. And it'll be Kennedy from the three. Down he goes at the 23-yard line. The tackle made by Nick Jester for the Volunteers. Only a couple of plays necessary for the Volunteers to move the ball into the end zone. Heath Schuler picks up the touchdown run. That is his first touchdown run of the season. Made some big plays last week against Georgia, but did not carry one into the end zone against the Bulldogs. Pass completed to Trey Everett. Everett in the ball game for the first time this afternoon. Tavio Henson brings him down. Everett been hampered by that uh, hamstring pull last year and this year as well. Just cannot get healthy, it seems. Tennessee using four men on the rush on the last play. Dropping back the other seven in pass coverage. Quick screen set up for Willie Jackson. Jackson reels off about eight or nine more yards before Jeff Tullis. Rather, Paul Yatkowski was there to make the stop for the Volunteers. It looks like the secret is, and it's not much of a secret, if you can give Shane Matthews time, he'll pick these guys apart. But when he's pressured, they can't get anything done. When he's protected, He's able to find the open receiver. And Vernon Jackson split wide to the left. Freshman tailback Tony Davis fights his way to the 45-yard line of Tennessee. George Kidd finally brought him down with help from Ingram. Davis showed some strength on that play. The freshman from Chipley, 5'11". 199 pounds. Eric Rett continues to spend much of the afternoon on the sideline with a nagging injury. Jack Jackson enters the ball game. He is split wide to the right for Florida. And the Gators did pick up a first down. Matthews for Jackson, overthrown at the 15-yard line. Henson in coverage deep along the sideline. Once again, Tennessee content to run their base defense. That's the final play of the first period after one quarter from Neyland Stadium. A score at Tennessee 7, Florida nothing. Stadium history is on hand to watch Tennessee and Florida battle it out this afternoon on an overcast Saturday in September. 97,137. The official announced attendance today. Tennessee leads Florida 7 to nothing. As we move to the second quarter, Florida with the football at Tennessee's 45-yard line, and they have a second and 10 play coming up. Uh, we move to the second quarter, and it looks like Eric Retz moved to the Gator bench with some type of injury. We'll try and get an update a little bit from Steve Babick along the sideline, but young Tony Davis, the freshman, is going to be called upon to be the uh, racehorse in that backfield this afternoon. A look at Florida's sideline. Steve Spurrier, great, great football coach at Duke, two-time ACC Coach of the Year, two-time Southeastern Conference Coach of the Year. Hands full this afternoon in Knoxville, Tennessee. 
Second and ten. Matthews getting a rush from the outside from both sides. And he's taken down by James Wilson on one end and Horace Morris on the other end. Morris is a Miami product out of Northwestern High School. No backs in this formation. There's the rush from the backside and the big hit by Wilson, number 72. That pushes the ball back on the Florida side of the 50 and brings up third and 17. Matthews flushed out of the pocket again. He gets the ball back over the Tennessee side of the 50-yard line, but the Gators will have to punt the ball on fourth down. Now the Tennessee defense being led by their front four. They're able to put just enough pressure on Shane Matthews to make the offensive pass plays break down. Jane Edge will try and back Tennessee's offense up. They blocked the last attempted punt. This one, it looks like, is going to sail into the end zone now and makes, it takes a nice gator bounce back toward the five-yard line, and that's where Florida downs it. A brilliant punt. What a kick by Edge. One of the top punters, obviously, in the country, Shane Edge. That's a 38-yard punt, but it doesn't tell the story of what it did for the Gator football team. Hit inside the one and then bounced back toward the five. Florida downed it right there. 13-24, early second quarter. Neyland Stadium, the University of Tennessee, nestled in the foothills of the Great Smoky Mountains. And the sun beginning to peep through this afternoon after a lot of rain yesterday and this morning. Catch the fire with Miami Heat basketball this fall on Sports Channel as the Heat fan the flames from last season's playoff appearance and try to slam their way to the top of the Atlantic Division right here on Sports Channel, home of the Heat. Check local listings for availability in your area. Well, this Tennessee offense certainly hasn't gotten untracked here, even though they're leading the ball game 7 to nothing. Schuler 0 for 2 in the passing game, and I think they've only got 40 yards rushing in the first quarter and they certainly are backed up in difficult field position right here running backs are Garner and Brunson the fullback Brunson gets three or four tough yards out to around the eight or nine yard line Kevin Carter was there to make the stop. Tennessee interim head coach or replacement head coach, however you like to phrase it, Philip Fulmer. So far, so good. He loves that running game as every offensive line coach does. He was a player here at Tennessee in the uh, late 60s, early 70s. Naturally, what, what does the media guide say about his... Uh, <laughs> Said he was a competent, competent blocker. blocker. Poor offensive lineman. You know, you're either competent or incompetent. <laughs> Brunson again gets the handoff, and Brunson really fights his way out across the 10. A couple of yards short of the first down, however. Ben Hanks gets up off the bottom of the stack for Florida. Carlton Miles, senior out of Daytona Beach, was there to plug the hole first. He and Eddie Robinson lead this Gator defense on the inside. Big third down play for Tennessee. Brunson again gets the handoff, and he may have just gotten enough for the first down. Miles was there to make the tackle right at the 10-yard line. Tennessee grinds out a first down, it would appear. Yeah, and that's a big first down, too, because they're on their... Well, they, they might have a measurement here. Let's don't give it to them just yet. Now they do. They were... Uh, 
you know, deep in their own territory. Obviously, they still are, but this is a big first down, and he makes it even though he tripped. Ben Hanks missed the opportunity in the backfield. It was Carlton Miles who scraped outside to make the tackle at the point of attack. Tennessee knows how to run that football. You can bet on that. Tailback Garner, boy, he's got some quick feet, doesn't he? Across the 30 to the 31 yard line. Will White there to make the tackle. But Tennessee gets another first down. And a 16 yard carry for Garner. He is an explosive running back. Yeah, this is the tailback that wasn't even mentioned in the preseason media guide, but he's the junior college transfer that has really been a star early in the season. He was supposed to back up James Little Train Stewart and Aaron Hayden, but he's taking the control himself, it seems. The pitch to Garner again. A four-yard carry. That'll bring up second and six. Now, they got that Gator defense thinking run, 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 and they're going to sneak in a pass here pretty soon. That's how they like to set up the pass, by pounding you with that running game. Garner with 38 yards rushing this afternoon. On the option, Schuler keeps. So some good balance, picks up the first down. Ed Robinson had a shot at him and slowed him down, but Schuler got the first down yardage. Tennessee has moved the ball out to their five-yard line out of their own 43. Let's go back to Steve Babbick on the sideline with an injury update. We mentioned before about Eric Rett having trouble with the ankle and Kelvin Randolph hurt an ankle. Not the same one he's been hurting, the other ankle. Kelvin Randolph and Eric Rett probably out until at least halftime where there can be some more evaluation. So the Gators starting backfield looking a little bit uh, slim right now. Garner got hit behind the line. That shows quickness again. And that doesn't help him, though. Kevin Carter gets him about 10 yards deeper than the initial contact. Well, there was some quickness by Carter as well, wasn't there? The play was destroyed by the penetration initially of the Gator defense on the right side. There's Monty Gro destroys the play right there, but cannot make the tackle. <laughs> Monty Gro misses, Gros misses again. <laughs> I bet you Charlie Garner didn't see a 6'4", 260-pound lineman with that kind of speed at Scottsdale Community College. Well, he'll see it in this league. Will White plugs the gap on Garner at the 33-yard line. Now that destroyed reverse was a big break for this Gator defense because Tennessee was really having their best success of the afternoon on offense. We're really winning the battle at the line of scrimmage there and then tried to come up with a trick play and then shot themselves in the foot and now they're fighting uphill to make a first down. Third and long for the Volunteers. Schuler. Going for Fleming, and he overthrew him by a couple of yards, and Fleming had a step on a hatch. Oh, he certainly did. If that ball had been perfect, Schumer and the balls would have had a gigantic play. Tennessee still has not completed a pass, but at least they gave the Gators uh, the look of the long pass on that play. Give them something to think about. What they do care about is that scoreboard, and right now it says seven for the Volunteers, and... There's a goose egg for the Gators. Gators came after the punt, but Hutton got it away. A good one. Willie Jackson simply falls on it inside the 15. Well, Tennessee had the ball at its own five-yard line just a couple of minutes ago. Reeled off a couple of first downs. Even though they got pushed back again, look where Florida takes over. At their own 14. So the Volunteers came out of that mess quite nicely. Time out on the field, 8.21 left in the first half of the game, and the ball's switched. Up. David Steele, Jim Yarbrough from Neyland Stadium in Knoxville, Tennessee. Volunteers leading the Gators 7 to nothing. Quick look at the game summary. The Gators have been able to accumulate some yardage, but 
have not connected yet uh, in the field goal department this season as Barnett Edmiston missed a 22 yard attempt in the first period Tennessee blocked the Florida punt and Heath Schuler ran the ball in two downs later from 11 yards out to give uh, the volunteers the only score of this football game pleasant afternoon for college football in East Tennessee kind of a turn of the century look right there on his offense has put together some drives but have not been able to put it in the end zone yet a flag went down and I think the Gators will be penalized again well, it's that illegal motion. Silent count that they've been working on that's given them trouble. The noise level is immense foul. on the field. Both start on the offense. Take a look at yeah, 73. Look. There's Jim Watson. Yeah, Watson just moved a little early, and offensive linemen have a tendency to do that on a passing play. They're trying to get the edge, get the jump on that defender, and Watson just moved too early. Eight of penalties a factor in this football game. The draw play to Davis did not fool Tennessee. The stop was made by Shane Bonham in the backfield. He's a transfer from the Air Force Academy from Fairbanks, Alaska. Did he come a long way to play college football or what? Bonham. Brian Taylor, the offensive tackle, not able to Keep Bonham out on the right side. Gators are moving the wrong direction. Second and 17 from now inside their 10 yard line. Well, play again to Davis and this Tennessee defense is just real fired up. Reggie Ingram, the inside linebacker, was there to make the stop. They were embarrassed last week at Georgia. Giving up close to 600 yards in offense. Ingram sees the draw play immediately. And there's Bonham again, number 92. We might mention that defensive coordinator Larry Marmy was not even here for spring practice, so that really put the defense in a bind as former coordinator Larry Lacewell left to join the Dallas Cowboys. Marmy in his second tour of duty here at Tennessee. He was the defensive coordinator when Reggie White was an All-American here in the early 80s. 25-second clock ran down to zero, and I think the Gators are going to be penalized again. They had a player coming on the field late, Willie Jackson. Shane Matthews had to step over and give verbally Jackson a call, and that took about 10 seconds. And this is just a disaster of a possession for the Gators. Well, and what it does as well is get the crowd even more fired up about their ability to help the volunteer defense get the job done. So the players on the field get fired up, the fans get fired up, and it just makes it even more difficult for the Gators to hear deep in their own territory like this. And if you can't hear, it's hard to get something accomplished, and they've made a quarterback switch. Barry Dean has been called upon the quarterback. What a spot. For Dean to be put into. Dean just airs it out, throws it up for grabs, and it's incomplete. I had the trips on on the left side with three receivers stacked up in that one area Jackson, Houston, and Jackson. Jack Jackson and Willie Jackson, and it did not pan out. Looks like a Hail Mary there. I think uh, Coach Spurrier just wanted to maybe talk to Matthews for a second, or perhaps this was a play exclusively well, maybe Dean designed for has, Terry Dean has to a roll stronger out. Arm. Might have been a tip play. Look at Jack Jackson standing around looking for the ball to come out of the the tip situation. Well, it could be a tip play, but it could also be an interception play. So that's a well, about as good as a punt, though, when you think about yeah, it. Yeah, that's probably what they were thinking about. And you don't get too many of those uh, plays blocked. The Gators have already had one punt block today. Ed shanked that one off the side of his foot. Tennessee is going to have great field position. Summers to the 30-yard line. Carter made the stop. And Tennessee will have possession of the ball at 
the Florida 30-yard line after a 39-yard kick and a 13-yard return for Tennessee. Volunteer seven. Gators nothing. Second quarter from Knoxville. Not just a quarter or a half, but 60 quality minutes. That's what it takes to win at this level. The same is true when you're looking at trucks. You need quality miles every mile. And at that game, Chevy trucks are best. Chevy full-size pickups are the highest quality trucks. They last longer, get better gas mileage, and are worth more when you sell them. Take a good look at your local Florida Chevrolet GO dealer. Quality trucks, quality people. Welcome to Pepper Tree Beach Club Resort, a five-star resort community on sunny St. Augustine Beach, where you can enjoy seven days and seven nights of a fabulous Florida vacation for only $199. Pepper Tree offers one- and two-bedroom park homes with every amenity and convenience. You can relax in style with our plush accommodations, including a fully equipped kitchen. And no resort vacation would be complete without a sparkling pool and a spacious clubhouse, where you can join in planned activities or create your own fun. Pepper Tree also offers two well-stocked lakes, shuffleboard, and a central location from which you can see the spectacular sights of St. Augustine, or enjoy golf, shopping, and fine dining. The Atlantic Ocean is just a stroll away, so beachcombers bring your bathing suits and join us at Pepper Tree Beach Club Resort for a full week of fabulous vacation value. Resort space is limited, so reserve your place in the Florida sun today. Call us at 1-800-854-0058. Tennessee, 68 yards in uh, offense in this game, and no passing yardage. All of their offense has been on the ground. But they lead Florida 7 0, and they have the ball at Florida's 30 yard line midway through the second period. The Gators take next week off and prepare to take the field against the Mississippi State Bulldogs Friday, October 2nd at 8 p.m. You can see all of the action from Scott Field in Starkville, Mississippi, right here on Sports Channel, home of the Fighting Gators. That is a special time due to the Thursday night game at Mississippi State. Friday night, October the 2nd, 8 p.m., the Gators against Mississippi State. Check local listings for Sports Channel and Gator Vision coverage in your area. Tennessee started their, their last drive on their own five-yard line. This one starts on the Gator 30. Ron Davis split wide to the right. The Volunteers send two tight ends into the game. Brunson and Garner are the running backs. Brunson, the fullback, slipped away from Miles, but then five or six Gators are there to smother him after a pickup of three yards. That Gator defense packing the area near the line of scrimmage right there. Miles missed the tackle initially, but then fought back to come up with the ball carrier. Tennessee really forcing the Gators to Think about their running game. Stop the run, and that's when they're going to sneak in a pass. This time the balls have three receivers on the play, and Shula rolling out finds Faulkner. Faulkner to the 20-yard line, and I think he'll have a Tennessee first down. He stayed in bounds. The clock continues to tick. 4:55 left in the second quarter. Siders have an injured player. Kevin Carter is stunned. And down on the field. Tennessee sprinted out in his direction, and we don't know if there was a crackback block or. Let's see if we can take a peek at what happened to Dexter Carter. Look at the top of your screen. Schuler's going to sprint to the right. Oh, it's the fullback who just chopped blocks. A beautiful block by the fullback. There's your sprint out. Faulkner, 35 receptions last year. That was the first pass completion of the game, wasn't it, for Tennessee? Yes, it was. Volunteers at the Gator 19. Got him a first down. And off to Garner. Garner gets three or four more near the 15. Well, that's Larry Stewart, rather. James Stewart, I should say. The sophomore from Morristown in the game at tailback. Tennessee has three fine tailbacks. Hayden started. Garner has played, and now Stewart. All three of them have carried for over 100 yards in their first two games. 
They're getting great production out of the tailback spot. Stewart on the trap play, and he goes untouched in for the touchdown. Good blocking along the offensive line by the Volunteers. That's that counter trap play you see so often now running the NFL and run by teams like the Tennessee Volunteers. You take a counter step to the left. The offensive line pulls to the right. And you get on the train and ride it. And that's exactly what Tennessee did at a gaping hole in a 16-yard touchdown. Volunteers are up 13 to nothing, and Bexford attempts the extra point. It is 14 to nothing, Tennessee. James Stewart scores for the second time this season, his 10th career touchdown run. He scored nine times, or rather eight times, last year as a freshman. Hailed from nearby Morristown, Tennessee. I tell you what, though, it didn't matter who was carrying the ball on that play. The offensive line just did a fantastic job. You're going to see some blocks at the point of attack on the right side. Watch the down blocks there and look at the convoy in front. Well, Gunner may have gotten, Bill Gunner may have gotten a piece of his heel as he skated by. But Stewart was in no danger of injuring himself on that play unless he just tripped on the yard marker at about the five. Well, fortunately, the Florida Gators have the kind of offense that can put a lot of points on the board. So even though Tennessee is out convincingly with a two touchdown lead, this ball game is yet to be uh, decided. Tennessee's defense set up the good field position and the Gators uh, also shot themselves in the foot several times on their last offensive series. And the touchdown run by Stewart makes it 14 and nothing. Volunteers kick it away again. This is Harrison Houston. And again, the Gators will not have good field position. They're backed up inside their 20. The tackle is made by Victor Brown. Uh, Tennessee just eating the Gators up right now on specialty team play, aggressive play by the Volunteers as they sprint down the field and try and destroy this return. You need to get out to that 20-yard line, and the Gators were barely able to get outside their own 10. Well, now Florida will have to show some patience. They're trailing 14 to nothing with a lot of time left in the football game, but this is a young team offensively. And do they have the patience here on the road? Harrison Houston and Shane Matthews get the Gators out of a hole. George Kidd uh, there to make the stop for Tennessee. The ball spotted at the 30-yard line, first and 10. Gators seem to have a lot more success across the middle behind the linebackers than they do deep down the sideline. You'd think Matthews perhaps will go more in that direction, try and hit the tight end or the wideouts as they run crossing routes. Tennessee is giving a lot of room in the 15, 20-yard range. Oh, that was a great catch by Jackson. He got a foot in. What a catch by the freshman, Jack Jackson, at the 46-yard line. That is Jackson's first catch as a Gator. Redshirt freshman out of Moss Point, Mississippi. I don't know if this play is designed or not, but Matthews felt like he had to get out of the pocket. Jackson saw him running toward the sideline, so he turned up. Matthews dumped the ball out to him, or laid it out to him, rather. No running backs in the backfield. Matthews pointing at the Tennessee defender. Wanted a pass interference call against George Kidd. He's trying to hit, I think, Harrison Houston slanting in from that wide-out spot on the left side. Well, the thing you have to realize right now is that Tennessee is playing their base defense. They're only rushing those four big guys down front. They're really not throwing a blitz package at Florida at all. They're trying to, to defend with seven guys dropping back. Again, Matthews did not have much time. Did not have enough time to let the pass routes develop. The pass routes that the Gators are trying to develop would take a couple of seconds in the making. 
Matthews is not getting enough time for his receivers to break open. Morris Morris, number 85, the other defensive end on the other side of Todd Kelly, that time getting the pressure on Matthews. Big third down play for Florida. Matthews needs 10 yards. He I don't barely know if he got, got it. it. Did he? I don't know what he was doing right there. He needed to be more aggressive getting downfield, but yeah, he got the first down. Yeah, perhaps he had a much better idea of where he had to get than we did. But, uh, looks like he stepped out of bounds rather gingerly there. Ball is at the 43-yard line of Tennessee. There's Willie, the dragging route. Willie Jackson. And that'll be good for another Florida first down. Tackle made by Steve Session. And Tennessee secondary. 3.07 now to play in the second quarter. 14 to nothing, Tennessee. And the Volunteers want to regroup a bit defensively. So Tennessee calls timeout. With exactly three minutes to play in the second quarter. Really a big series here because as we approach halftime, if the Gators can, in fact, get a touchdown on the scoreboard, this game tightens up considerably. If, conversely, if Tennessee can stop the Gators, they take tremendous momentum into the halftime. So really important for this Florida offensive unit as Shane Matthews discusses the opportunities with Coach Spurrier along the sideline to get in the end zone and get on the scoreboard. Well, it's hard to believe that a Florida team which under Steve Spurrier averages 31 points a game in two-plus seasons and against a Tennessee defense that gave up uh, yardage in the bunches last week against Georgia and really has not come together perhaps until today. It's hard to believe, though, that the Gators could go an entire half of football without scoring. Well, and Shane Matthews currently is 9 of 15 for 115 yards. Those are... Not great numbers for a quarterback that has spoiled the Gator faithful by throwing up big numbers week after week. Florida continues to come with a no back four wide out set. Actually five wide outs. Three on the left side, two on the right. Pressure coming from the outside. The pass complete to Houston. A flag goes down in the backfield. I think a roughing the passer penalty is going to be called on Tennessee. They hit him late. Well, that play was designed to set up and then roll to the wide side or to the left. One of the backs is going to crack on the defensive end, Kelly, I believe, on that side. But it was backside pressure that Matthews felt and got the hit from the backside. They have a roughing the passer penalty against the defense. Yeah, it was it was James Wilson. Wilson just too aggressive right there. An excellent call by the referee whose primary job is to protect the quarterback back there. No backs again. Wide receivers spread all over the football field. They haven't put any penalty yardage on here. That's where Houston went out of bounds, the 21-yard line. So, so far, the Gators have gained no advantage uh, because of Tennessee's personal foul. 2.54 on the clock. Late in the second quarter, the Gators have taken this ball from inside their own 15. And now here comes the extra yardage to be marked off against the Volunteers. Whoa. There it was. That really hurts the volunteer defense. And it's a tremendous break for this Gator offense that desperately needs to get on the scoreboard before halftime. Houston and Everett will split wide to the right side. Willie Jackson will split wide to the right. Two other receivers on the left side. Tennessee comes with a blitz, the pass to the end zone, and touchdown, Florida. Aubrey Hill 
on the receiving end of the Shane Matthews pass. Tennessee gambling with the blitz. And they pay the price. It's 14 to 6. And there was also confusion in the secondary at the same time. I saw one of the defenders frantically screaming for a timeout as the ball was snapped. Uh, we saw Monty Duncan come up with a touchdown catch last week. Duncan rarely used in the Gator offense last year. And here we have the same situation. Edmiston for the extra point try. And it is good. Two minutes, 50 seconds left to play in the first half. And Florida cuts Tennessee's lead in half, and they do it quickly, Jim. And that might be an important factor there because if Florida's defense can come on and stop Tennessee, the Gators will get another crack at it before the end of the period. Yeah, this offense is obviously explos explosive. And we're going to take a look at Aubrey Hill. As we mentioned, Aubrey Hill, not a big factor in the Gator offense last year, although a talented player, this time... Matthews just squeezes the ball in between the two Tennessee defenders. Oh, Matthews says, yes, we needed that. Aubrey Hill did not play in last week's game against Kentucky. I think he's had some hamstring problems. Yeah, he's had hamstring problems, and that's his first catch of the season. Let's check back on the field to Steve Babick. Steve, what have you got? Well, David, when I've been doing injury reports in the first half, it's usually been... David, when I've been giving injury reports here in the first half, it's usually been uh, the offensive side of it, the ankles with Rhett and Randolph, but now we go to the defensive side. Last defensive series, Kevin Carter came off, and he had a dislocated finger on his left hand. They pulled it out, taped it up, and he put his helmet back on, and he's ready to go back in. So Kevin Carter kind of bared down a little bit and played the second half, uh, following that dislocated finger on his left hand. That's an ugly sight, too. I've had one of those. You fall, and you, you reach out to break your fall, and all of a sudden you got a finger it's got a, at, at a right angle to the digit. Ron Davis is hit late. That's going to be a penalty against Florida. A personal foul. Looked like somebody came flying in late after the play. Yeah, just sloppy play mentally by the coverage team. You can't afford just to give away yardage like this. It's hard enough for your defense to stop the other guys anyway. Emotions are running high here today, and this is the kind of thing that happens in an emotional football game. Yeah, it was the helmet. Well, there was no doubt about that one. Yeah, Pete Archie, uh, if he'd simply fallen on the pile, he might have gotten away with that, but he's, he speared with the helmet, and uh, that's the violation. Jones and Faulkner split wide to the left side, and a handoff to the fullback, Brunson. Well, he is a strong pull of a ball carry and we got another penalty flag down. Brunson picked up a couple of yards to near the 36. And it again will go against the Gators. Well, you cannot grab that face mask at all. We don't know if it was inadvertent or intentional, but uh, either way is a penalty. Five yard face mask penalty during the run will be a first down. Unintentional. Yeah. It's inadvertent by Carlton Miles, number 31, as he scrapes outside. He throws his arms up, and, well, that's that's a cheap call there. He's really wrestling the headgear. Well, he was trying not to grab onto the yeah. face mask. But it was a five-yard penalty. That's Garner, the ball carrier. And it looks like he'll have a first down. It'll be, be very close to it. McMillan there to make the stop. Scoring drive for the Gators, an impressive one. 89 yards and eight plays. Matthews, fifth touchdown pass of this season, the 56th of his career, which ties him up with Kerwin Bell for the school lead in career touchdown passes. Uh, Gator defense has to ratchet up the intensity right here. Cannot afford to give Tennessee another chance to get on the scoreboard. And these guys can move the ball quickly as well. Another penalty flag. Several of them, as a matter of fact. Well, it's an ugly series, isn't it, with all these <laughs> yellow flags on the field? Dead ball foul, five yards, false start on the offense. Now it's against uh, Tennessee. I had official Dick Burleson had more airtime than Shane Matthews and Heath Schuler today. Now he's on national television, ABC. 
and Sports Channel. Schuler rolling out. He had a man open, and the pass was not caught fairly by Kendrick Jones. I think it might have short hopped him. Now Schuler steps over and has a word for Kendrick Jones. Schuler shows good leadership qualities, doesn't he? He really a take charge guy out there for Tennessee. Well, and he's battled for respect as the starting quarterback as he replaced all-world performer Andy Kelly, who had three great years here at Tennessee. Garner had a gaping hole up the middle. Monty Groh runs him down from behind at the 31-yard line. This Charlie Garner is an exciting running back. Well, the quick feet at the line of scrimmage, he jumps laterally. Watch this move right here. Right after the broken tackle right here, watch this jump right there. Look at the lateral leap. That's the huge move right there that got him open, and Monty Groh hustling downfield to stop him after a 31-yard gain. Garner gained 2,059 yards in junior college and 26 touchdowns in one season. And now we know why. Schuler feeling some pressure, unloads it, and it is caught. Almost intercepted, but then caught by the tight end, David Horn. At Florida's 10-yard line, 124 left in the quarter. Keith Schuler does a brilliant job right here of escaping the Gator pass rush. You see the pressure he feels right there, and it looks like the old jump pass from the 1950s, but he throws it deep downfield to horn the tight end. There's the athletic ability that we talked about that Schuler has displayed. On the option, Schuler almost got hit in the back field, but then managed a couple of yards across the 10 yard line. Tennessee has really not had a quarterback with the kind of athleticism of Keith Schuler, I think since Jimmy Streeter in the late 70s. Streeter holds the rushing record for Tennessee at the quarterback position, and I got to believe those records will fall to Schuler, who, as we've seen, can pass as well as run the football. Now we'd probably put Schuler and Jimmy Streeter and Conridge Holloway all kind of in the same category. Holloway, same type of quarterback, strong arm, but a real outstanding scrambler. And Schuler is sort of in that mold. Scoring summary, Tennessee took the lead 7-0 on quarterback Keith Schuler's 11-yard scamper after a blocked punt. That made it 7-0, and then the Volunteers went up 16-0. Another short drive, only a 30-yard drive after a good defensive series by the Volunteers. James Stewart carried it in from 16 yards out. Florida then made it 14-7 on Shane Matthews' 11-yard touchdown pass to Aubrey Hill. The Gators drove the ball close to 90 yards on that possession and had hoped to get the ball back and maybe tie the score up. But now they're just trying to hang on as Tennessee threatens inside Florida's 10-yard line with less than a minute to play in the second quarter. Penalty flag goes down in the backfield as Schuler, what looks similar to the same play he scored on earlier in this football game, steps out of bounds at the one-yard line. Well, let's check the flag. They're counting the Tennessee Volunteers on the field. We have too many men on the field on the offense. That will give you a distinct advantage. Monty Groh was blitzing that time from his skater back or strong safety position, and he got knocked down and allowed Schuler the opportunity to bounce outside, but the extra blockers uh, <laughs> not allowed to have those guys out there. And is that a loss of down? I, I was just thinking it is a loss of down. 15-yard penalty and a loss of down, I, as I recall. Yeah, I not, not a play you see called too often. On the offense, especially. The is most, it? Uh, the most infamous 12-man on the field, I recall, for Florida was at Southern Cal in, uh, I think it was 1982. 
out in Los Angeles when the Gators were trying to stop a Southern Cal drive late and had 12 defensive players on the field giving Southern Cal an extra play they scored a touchdown and tied the game last play of the game the Tennessee penalized for 12 men on the field I don't believe they lost the down though it was second down again I guess you're right Garner barrels ahead of the 20 clock running Tennessee has one timeout left they might just settle for three points here take one more crack at it yeah maybe a crack deep in the end zone let's see what the call is the Gators are threatening the blitz no it's a running play and Garner's quick feet manage about four yards Tennessee fans are not real happy with the decision to conservatively run down the clock and take three points they wanted to see the balls put it in the end zone Tennessee now uses its final timeout with 14 seconds left in the quarter and here comes the field goal team and John Bexport who has not missed a field goal this year he's three out of three the and, Gators, uh, uh, he's 18 for 24 overall so he's Gators, a solid kicker excuse me David the Gators have not made a field goal this year and Tennessee has not missed one Maybe that's why they didn't hesitate to go for the three pointer rather than risk uh, an interception possibly and get no points at all. You got to believe it's going to take more than 10 points to beat Florida though even though they'll have 17 to 7 lead. Well, Florida missed a 22 yard field goal in the first period and they had a Hunt block which set up Tennessee's first touchdown. So that's 10 point swing right there in the favor of the Volunteers. But the Gators have pretty much just handed to Tennessee. But Tennessee was an opportunistic team last week against Georgia. And it doesn't matter how you get them. The only thing that matters is that you get those points and those victories. Bex Wart will hit it from the 25. It'll be a 35-yard attempt with 14 seconds left in the quarter. He got a good, clean look at it, and the kick is good. Back sport, still perfect for the season, and field goals. He's now four out of four, and that makes it a 17-7 Tennessee lead. And that's a big drive for the Volunteers after Florida marched down the field and scored a touchdown the Gators were hoping to get the football back and Tennessee ran and not only got three points but they ran almost all the time off the clock and there were almost three minutes on the clock when they took possession that will certainly make Florida more aggressive in the second half in terms of trying to get on the scoreboard they have to make up that 10 point deficit and then get a lead as well Tennessee playing opportunistic football here in Knoxville. Joey Chapman coming on to kick it away to the Gators who have only nine seconds left in the second quarter. Harrison Houston and Larry Kennedy will be the deep man for the Gators. Tremendous crowd here at Neyland Stadium and the bad weather is broken away. Sunshine prevails in East Tennessee. Kennedy will bring it out from the four yard line. Almost stumbled and fell. Oh. And down he goes at the 20. Four seconds left. The Gators will have one chance. Probably have one play before the end of the half. Kennedy seemed to twist his ankle right there. There was an opportunity, a, a hole, but he tripped and was not able to recover. Hopefully he didn't sprain his ankle. We'll be back. Last play of the first half. Matthews just falls on the football. 
And that's the end of the first half for Neyland Stadium in Knoxville, Tennessee. A halftime score, the Volunteers 17. The fourth-ranked Florida Gators 7. Back with more from Neyland Stadium right after this. The skyline, Knoxville, Tennessee, and some dark clouds looming in the backdrop here. Uh, rain stopped just before kickoff, about an hour before kickoff. It rained a lot yesterday and this morning, but we've had good weather since this game began. Hope that dark cloud does not bring about more precipitation here in the second half. It's 17 to 7, Tennessee leading. And the Volunteers, uh, remember, they won the toss of the coin and, and elected to take the ball in the second half. That's looking like a good decision right now, Jim. Yeah, with a 10-point lead, they'd love to add to that total right now. And conversely, that Gator defense needs to play with some enthusiasm and get the momentum back on the Gators' side of the line of scrimmage. But we'll see how that unfolds here shortly. In Knoxville, a critical game in the Eastern Division of the Southeastern Conference. We mentioned earlier, Tennessee won a tough one on the road last week at Georgia. And if they can get by the Florida Gators here this afternoon at home, they'll have a commanding position really early in the season in that Eastern Division race. Volunteers victorious over Georgia last week 34 to 31. And uh, we expected a high scoring game much like last week and Tennessee Georgia here today so far that has not really materialized at least not on the Gators side of the field Tennessee with 17 first half points. But still 30 minutes of football left, and the Gators kick it away. Ron Davis. And a penalty flag is down already. Davis is stopped at the 20-yard line by Ben Hanks. Let's check the marker. And it looks like it'll go against Tennessee. Well, not what they wanted to do. You know, they got the ball out to the 20. That's where you wanted to start at a minimum. Now they're going to get backed up, perhaps, as we see the call. Pushing. They have an illegal Over. block in the back on the run back. 10 yard penalty. First down. In the first half, Tennessee was penalized five times for 47 yards, Florida was penalized seven times for 54 yards so penalties were a factor continue to be in this game Tennessee backed up to its own 10 yard line as we begin the second half from Neyland Stadium sophomore quarterback Heath Schuler hands off to the fullback oh fumble. and the Gators say they've got the ball let's see if oh no nope. they're gonna rule it down I think Dave let's see no question about the call the official made it instantly he said the running back was down and the Gators Ed Robinson wants that football for Florida. Yeah, no matter how much the Gators protest, it's not going to happen because the whistle was blown. Oh, oh the ball is stripped out. Yeah, that's uh, it's not even close. But evidently they blew the whistle and had made the commitment uh, to stop the play and we're not about to reverse it. Well, and that's it. a tough break for the Gators. They had a fumble there and they would have been sitting right on Tennessee's doorstep early in the third quarter. Play action fake and Schuler fires it over the middle in and out of the hands of the tailback James Stewart. Stewart not able to come up with a catch. Uh, the Gator tailback uh, is featured in the passing game. Tennessee doesn't throw that much to their tailback. Uh, James Stewart had a chance to come up with a real big play right there. Schuler delivered the ball but no catch. Now it is third down and eight for the Volunteers from their 12 yard line. They keep it on the ground and hope Garner can make something out of it but not this time. Big number 60 Henry McMillan trying to fire up Florida's defense made the tackle and Florida fans on the other side of the field here at Neyland Stadium. They're looking long range at the play down on this end. Well that was a waste still inspired. Wasted opportunity by Tennessee, as you mentioned, with a 10-point lead, getting the ball at the onset of the second half, but got nothing done, and the Gators 
are going to get the ball back perhaps with decent field position it looks yep Willie Jackson dives and catches the ball at the 49 yard line you'll take the 50 yard line anytime you get it on offense and we will take a timeout with 13 21 to play in the third and Tennessee leading Florida. The broadcast rights to today's telecast have been granted to Sports Channel Florida by the University of Florida solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any reproduction, retransmission, or other use of this program without the express written consent of Sports Channel Florida is prohibited. Well, if there's going to be any fun in that fun and gun offense, it better start right now. They got the ball on the 50-yard line, and they trail by 10. Meanwhile, Sports Channel brings you a college doubleheader next Saturday with exciting football action. Lehigh at Cornell. That's at 12.30 p.m. at 11.30 p.m. West Virginia and Virginia Tech. Only on Sports Channel. Check local listings for availability in your area. Well, that is the heavily taped left ankle of Eric Rett. And he looks anxious to get back in there, but he remains on the sideline, and the Gators have no back in the offense well, all wide receivers they come with five wide receivers no tight ends Tennessee in a straight four-man rush Matthews without much time and he one hops it to Harrison Houston Todd Kelly again putting pressure on Matthews he's taking that hard inside rush against the young true freshman Reggie Green and just continues to hustle on the pass rush as the rain clouds appear closer and closer to the stadium. No huddle. And movement by freshman Reggie Green on the left side of the Florida line. Dead ball foul. Both start on the offense. Florida's offense has sputtered and spluttered along this afternoon. And it doesn't look too much better so far. Still early, though, in the third quarter. Let's go to the sideline and Steve Babbitt. David, he, talk, he talked about Eric Rett. Uh, the word with Eric Rett and Calvin Randolph, their ankles were iced. They're both clear to give it a go here in the second half. It's up to them to see how far they can go. Rett's in the game right here. He, Takes the fake, and then the pass is incomplete. Big hit. Big hit put on by number 26, and that's David Bennett, senior strong safety. But the pass was thrown high. Looked like uh, Harrison Houston mistimed his leap right there. Here's the, the time. Matthews with a lot of courage stepping forward, throwing the ball. Houston just leaped early. Uh, the ball had a ball little bit of a on tail it. on it yeah, and uh, got there slower than Houston expected. Gators big third down, third and 15. Hand back back to Matthews, and he has to get rid of it because Todd Kelly is in his face. Well, there's no excuse for this. The tight end is on the left side to help the tackle, but Reggie Green just lets the tight end in for himself and that's an easy kill for Todd Kelly the outstanding pass rusher and he destroys the play that's a break a mental breakdown and should have been a double team right there on Kelly Shane Edge back to punt Sean Summers standing deep for the volunteers and that kick is shot out of a cannon Summers from the 14 yard line a crack. Sean Summers to midfield and beyond. And old momentum is swung sharply to the big orange of Tennessee. Sean Summers, a freshman, a 40 yard return giving the volunteers. A tremendous opportunity here as the punter Shane Edge makes the saving tackle. The Gators had the ball on the 50, got nothing done. Now Tennessee has it inside Gator territory. Let's see if they can take advantage of the situation. 
Pass incomplete intended for Faulkner. Craig Faulkner wide open as he runs the out route toward the sideline. Seven or eight yards deep. Quarterback sprinting his way, but the ball sailed on, on uh, Schuler right there. Faulkner not able to come up with the catch as Philip Fulmer looks on. The interim head coach as Johnny Majors recovers from his heart surgery. Schuler ran right into Henry McMillan. Three yards behind the line of scrimmage. McMillan with the sack on the quarterback. That'll bring up a third down and 13. There you see Henry, who was a prop 48 player. Got no experience last year, was not at spring practice. Came out this fall and won the job at defensive end. Uh, he's done a great job, but the Gators will be glad to get Harvey Thomas back at some time this season, who also will help at that position. Schuler running for his life, and we have a penalty flag as Schuler goes down, and then Carlton Miles came leaping in over the top. Tennessee fans thought a flag should have gone down there at the end of the play, but I don't see one. Looks like he came up short of the first down marker, and there's going to be a holding call against the, uh, the Volunteers. Now, Florida has the choice to make. Give Tennessee another down and take the penalty or let them punt the ball away. Oh, there's the hold on Dexter. Excuse me, Kevin Carter, the defensive end. And they didn't use any rope. That's about all you could. <laughs> they used four arms, though, on him. All you could say about it. Holding on the offense. The penalty is declined. Fourth down. The Gators will take the football. It's fourth and 11 for the Volunteers. Tell you what, I wouldn't relax right here. They might try a bit of trickery. Well, you're up by 10 points. You're in good field position. Your defense has done a good job. Gators have a 10 players up on the line of scrimmage. They're going to punt it away. Another nice kick by Hutton. Tennessee trying to down the ball, but it's into the end zone, and Florida brings it out to the 20. Oh, very close. Beautiful punting job. When the ball crosses the plane, that's all she wrote. We'll take time out with 11.28 to play in the third period. Tennessee 17, Florida 7. Welcome back to Neyland Stadium where Florida's at the football at its own 20-yard line, first and 10 in the third quarter. Tennessee has been getting a tremendous rush on with only four men rushing the Gators. They have not had the blitz. They've had pressure on Matthews all day. Now Reggie Green just doesn't get it done against Todd Kelly. It's Todd Kelly that's putting the great pressure on. Jay Matthews, 11 out of 20, 135 yards, a touchdown. Harrison Houston, four receptions. Tennessee led by Garner, the tailback, six yards per carry for the junior college transfer. And touchdown runs by Stewart and Schuler. Perry Dean is now the quarterback. He's going to keep it on a draw play. And Dean dives to the 15. He got six yards back. But the Gators had lost 11. Shane Matthews limped off the field after that last sack. Now he's coming back on the field. Perry Dean, the sophomore from Fort Myers, says, uh, put me in, coach, when we're not backed up against our own goal line. Dean did his job to give Matthews a chance to regroup, and now it is third down and 15. Tennessee showing the blitz. Only two seconds on the clock. Matthews just finds an open spot on the field. One of the few times Tennessee has elected to blitz. They do it on the third and long, and the Gators have no chance to succeed on the play. Right now, Tennessee's got Florida back on its heels in this football game. The Gators backed up, punting from their goal line, trailing 17 to 7 with 9.58 left in the third quarter. Summers just reeled off a 40-yard return 
earlier in this period. Shane Edge really needs to clobber this one. Low line drive. Oh, no. Summers won't get a return, but Tennessee gets good field position at Florida's 49. Now he hooked that one. 33 yard kick. Shane Edge, who averages well over 40 yards a punt, hooked that one for 33 yards, and Tennessee's going to start again just inside Gator territory. A lot of pressure on that defense these last two series. Tennessee gets off to the fullback. Brunson. And Brunson gets four first down yards. They've called on him a lot in this game. Oh, he hits that hole so quickly at 245. He's a load to bring down, and if he can get you four or five yards on first down, it really is a big help to that offense. Brunson checks out. Mose Phillips in at fullback. The ball's out of the eye. They run a little option play, and Schuler cuts it up the field and gets the first down inside Florida's 40-yard line. Tennessee goes in and scores here. Gators have some serious work to do. And the rain starts to fall at Neyland Stadium again. We thought we were in the clear as far as the weather's concerned, and here comes some showers. Florida's showing a blitz, and here they come, and a play is stuffed at the line. Hanks. Came slashing in from the right side, number 11 for the Gators. But he almost doesn't complete the tackle. Garner, you watch Garner fight away from Hanks. Hanks makes the big hit, but he got to wrap him up. He got knocked away by his own man right there. And look at the extra effort by the junior college transfer, Charles Garner. Fans of Neyland Stadium grabbing their ponchos. Second and eight. They go to the fullback. Phillips gets nothing. And that'll bring up a third down for the balls. And it's going to rain heavily here momentarily as the drizzle turns into a slashing rain. Midway through the third quarter, Tennessee 17, Florida 7. The wind in the face of that Tennessee offense right now. Schuler guns it up the field, and it is incomplete at the 25-yard line. That'll bring up a fourth down play for the Vols. That pass intended for Cliff Dutton, the sophomore from Sykesville, Maryland. Somebody threw a smoke bomb or some <laughs> similar type of device down on the field. As you're looking at sophomore punter Tom Hutton, now that Gator running game is going to have to be born again here this afternoon if this rain continues to this extent and the Gators haven't gone to the run since Eric Rett left the ball game. Hutton came nowhere close to deadening the ball inside the 20 yard line and the Gators get it at the 20. And it continues to be a surprise that the Gators have gone to the no back offense since they've had such great success in the Southeastern Conference with their balanced attack. But with Eric Red on the sideline, they've elected to go primarily consistently with the passing game. Let's see if that changes right here. And I think Rhett's on the field. Eric Red is in the Florida backfield. And so too is Kelvin Randolph. But Tennessee is up to the task. And they stop Rhett behind the line of scrimmage. Tennessee defenders led by J.J. Surlis and Willie Richards. And a loss of two for the Gators. Tried to sweep to the weak side right there and ran right at Todd Kelly, the 
kid that's playing so outstandingly today. Gators out of a straight eye offense. Matthews connects with Willie Jackson. Jackson gets the first down of the 32-yard line. Good effort by Jackson. Tally made the stop for Tennessee. Willie Jackson has such extraordinary ability after he catches the football to skip and dance and maneuver away. Watch him catch the ball in his chest and watch the quick feet. A little dance to the right, a step back to the left. And he came up limping a little bit. And that's the Gators' first completion of the second half. Penalty flags down as Rhett takes the handoff. It's motion on the left side again. An early movement. You can't do that to your offense. It's tough enough to There's play the Tennessee foul. defense. Ball star on the offense. Again, I think it's the freshman, Reggie Green. Getting yeah, a baptism yeah. under fire in the Southeastern Conference here in Knoxville. Yeah, he's backed off the line of scrimmage a little bit to help himself out on pass protection. Then he starts leaning backwards as well. Wayne is coming down in sheets. Puddles are forming on the field. Matthews in a driving rain. Rhett couldn't hold on to the football. I believe that's the first screen pass of the afternoon right there. You use the screen occasionally to try and slow down the pass rush of the opponent. That time it did not work. Second and 15 and good heavens. Look at the water standing on Naylor Stadium surface. You think Tennessee's not glad to see this rain? They just assumed the game in right now at 17-7. They've got a 10-point lead and a driving rainstorm. But Eric Rett bolts up the middle of the 35, and the Gators will still need about six or seven yards to get a first down. Eric uh -huh. Rett is such a hard-working back. Uh, he worked so hard at practice that uh, Saturday afternoon, all those efforts pay off in dividends. And he gave the Gators a chance with that run to pick up a first down right here. Again, the handoff to Rhett. Rhett goes down at the line of scrimmage. Surlis again was there to make the tackle for Tennessee. Now your punting gets interesting, too, in this rain, Jim. Just to snap the ball, catch it, and kick it away. Yeah, I think scary is the word. It's uh, two out of ten third down conversions. The Gators were uh, better than 50% last week against Kentucky in third down conversions. Catching that snap under these conditions is very difficult for the punter. And the receiver of the punt as well, if Edge can get it off, but it's a sloppy kick that rolls well inside the Tennessee territory. Shane Edge has probably never been gladder to step off the football field than he is right now. He dodged that potential nightmare with a 51-yard kick and no return. And it went about 25 yards in the air. The other 26 at roll. My gosh. Good drainage. There's too much water at one time. Garner gets the ball. He is a tough man to bring down, isn't he? Got away from a tackler in the backfield, and Spear finally took him down. Cameraman got knocked out of the play also. Watch the balance of Garner as he's smothered by Ellis Johnson. Ellis had him Johnson, but he doesn't wrap up. him up. Banks is surprised to see him get away, misses the tackle. Whoa, and there's the hit on the sideline. Eight 
yards on the carry when it looked like he was going to lose two. And Brunson does lose two. Kevin Carter there to make the tackle. Well, I wonder what Steve Babick looks like about now. <laughs> Steve? You know, guys, I was going to say the one consolation about this whole thing, there's not much wind down here. I'll tell you what, though, send the Coast Guard after me after the game, make sure I'm still down here. It's going to be awfully tough, in all seriousness, for the Gators to mount a pass and attack, so look for the short stuff and also the draws and the runs to see if they can get something going. Maybe a big break here on defense might help, too. Let's throw darts at the weatherman who said it was going to be clear all afternoon. Tennessee going to get the first down. Garner bounces to the outside. I think you're going to hear a lot about this young man before the season ends. Hey, we've heard a lot about him this afternoon. He's really making an impact on this ball game. Again, he was the third tailback on the depth chart as the season commenced. Two outstanding tailbacks in front of him. These guys were the strength of the offense, Hayden and Stewart. But Garner has garnered the spotlight. He was injured in his sophomore junior college season. Only had 756 yards. Garner got a block on the corner, and then the Gators dragged him out of bounds at the 36. As they go skating into the Tennessee bench, Ben Hanks made the tackle and the officials uh, probably will get a little lenient now with hits out of bounds because you just can't put the brakes on like you'd like in this situation. Well he got dragged out of bounds and that's the difference between running out of bounds and hitting somebody and getting dragged out like Hanks was. The players aren't the only people here in the fans to get wet. The officials are getting soaked down here too. 342 left in the third period. There's a fumbled football. Penalty flags down. And I think Tennessee center fell on the ball. It'll be illegal motion on the quarterback. I think he stepped back before the ball was snapped. Now well, that's a break for that Gator defense. It's Tennessee with Garner carrying the football has been able to move out. with some consistency in the running game, but that penalty will step them back five. And ordinarily, the Gators' offense, you would think, would have plenty of time to overcome a 10-point deficit, but now with the weather a factor, every minute that Tennessee eats off the clock offensively makes it more and more unlikely the Gators can come back and win this football game. The fullback, Brunson, diving across the 32 to the 34-yard line. That'll bring up a third down play. And the Vols will need about six to keep this drive alive. Steve Spurrier at Florida has lost only one Southeastern Conference game. And it was two years ago here against Tennessee. Florida really needs to put the clamps on the Vols right here. And they're not going to do it. Fullback Moe Phillips. Freaking into the end zone. Touchdown, Tennessee. A 67-yard touchdown pass from Heath Schuler to number 19. Moe Phillips. That is Moe Phillips' first touchdown for the Volunteers. I don't know that he's touched the ball today. I don't recall. I think he had one carry and was stuffed at the line when Brunson got a rest. Now they go to the play-action pass on third and short and come up with a huge play and take a commanding lead over the Florida Gators. 23-7. With 2.49 to play in the third quarter. And the extra point still to come. John Bexport. Flags go down. And the Volunteers had some movement in the line. Rodney Gordon, an offensive guard, flinched before the snap. A 
Well, Tennessee really in a commanding position right here. Even extra points for an adventure in this environment, but Beckport forces it through the uprights of Tennessee. A commanding 24 to 7 lead as you look at the reaction of quarterback Keith Schuler on Phillips. Touchdown play. And I recognize that gentleman, even though he probably has looked better. <laughs> That's David Keith. Actor uh, played a major role in Officer and a Gentleman. Looks a bit camera shy right there, doesn't he? Yeah, let us see your face there, David. There he I is. remember him as Elvis in Heartbreak Hotel. Big Tennessee fan on the sideline. He's probably two feet deep in water. No heartbreak here today for Tennessee volunteer fans as they take a commanding 24 to 7 lead over the Caters. Lard is Jack Jackson to the 23 yard line. We just had a big lightning strike out to the east. Take another look at the Tennessee quarterback. Good play action. He really drew the Florida defense away from the right side, and then Phillips did all the rest. Well, White is all by himself out there. It looked like a breakdown in coverage. Whoever had responsibility for Phillips was nowhere to be seen. Dell Spear in futile pursuit. And there's a penalty against Florida. An illegal block on the kick. Things are going from bad to worse for the Gators. Tennessee fans are wet, but they are still celebrating. Shane Matthews to Eric Rett. Ryan's out four. On first down, it'll be second and six with 2.30 left in the quarter. Paul Yetkowski in on the stop to transfer from Mesa Community College. Tennessee just reloading. They felt like they might be rebuilding, but I think Johnny Majors and Philip Fulmer are just reloaded the gun. This defense has really been impressive today. Rhett gets two more yards. The football is an emotional game and Tennessee has played with great emotion today and there's not enough you can say about the role that emotion plays in football Jim and they played with great excellence as well by shutting down that Florida running game and uh, without the running game the Gators just have not been able to get anything done and they put pressure on Matthews when he has attempted to throw the ball. Eric Rett, I think he did not get the first down. He did not get the first down. Well, you're talking about emotion and Reggie Ingram, number 41, the inside linebacker out there, celebrating with Yetkowski as they checked off to the pitch to Rett. They get one block, but it's the pursuit of Ingram, number 41, that stops the effort. Florida must punt with 104 left in the third quarter. Gators have only two seconds to snap the ball. And they fake the punt and don't get the first down. The ball was snapped to the up man, Michael Gilmore. Gilmore was stopped by Cullis. The Gators down, they're feeling perhaps they've got nothing to lose. Down by 17 in the game, getting late near the fourth period. They gamble and it does not pay. Well, the play didn't look like it came off. From the moment the ball was snapped, it looked like there was some hesitation along the line of scrimmage. The ball got to the ball carrier and there was no blocking going on. And Tennessee just slashed in and stomped the play. 
Garner trying to turn the corner, and this time he does not break free from the tackle. Larry Kennedy wrapped him up good that time, and Garner loses a couple of three or four yards. That'll be second down. They officially marked the ball at the 23, so it's second and 15. Time running down in the third period. Tennessee 24, Florida 7. Schuler, nice cut, getting away from Will White, and he's inside the 10 before Monty Grove can finally stop the sophomore from Bryson City, North Carolina. Uh, he's Schuler having no trouble at all getting outside on this Gator defense. He runs to the wide side, sprints out to the wide side, runs right at us in the press box side. The block of the fullback. Cuts back on the contained man, Will White, and there's no one but Monty Grow to make the tackle. That's it for the third quarter for Neyland Stadium. Tennessee fans wet but on their feet and cheering a 24-7. Steve Spurrier likes to call Florida Field a swamp in Gainesville, but Neyland Stadium looks more like a swamp than the Florida Field probably has ever looked right now with all this rain here in the second half, and the volunteers have adapted to, to the inclement weather perhaps even better than the Gators in the second half. Big bolt of lightning just crackled out to our left beyond the northern end zone. That's a scary, dangerous situation with this lightning Jumping all around us, especially for the players, obviously. And Fourth quarter starts and a handoff to the tailback. And Garner is inside the five. Tennessee first and goal as the fourth period begins. And they lead 24 to 7. Florida 58 yards rushing. That tells a lot of the story right there. Tennessee 186 yards on the ground. Garner has been the workhorse. Ball inside of the five. You know, I just got ready to say uh, just a moment ago that it's amazing that there have been no turnovers. Now, there was a blocked punt, but no fumbles, no pass interceptions in this game. Really no drop passes because of the... Well, Rhett dropped one uh, earlier, but probably because of the rain. But no, it hasn't been... That's right on the screen pass. The screen pass, but neither team has turned the ball over. Schuler almost did there. Now it is third down. This is where he is so dangerous. Monty Grow denies him the goal line. Oh, he got in. Rather late call by the officials, but they say Schuler got in. Tennessee leads 30 to 7. The Gators unable to contain Keith Schuler as he sprints out. Once he breaks outside of that containment, he's like a talented tailback in the open field, and they just can't stop him before he gets in the end zone. John Beck for it, throws, uh, kicks the ball through the upright. Tennessee leads 31 to 7. Take another look at the touchdown maneuver of Keith Schuler, who just willed this ball into the end zone when Grow hit him at the two yard line. Ronnie Grow just could not stop the momentum. Florida's defenders, they have not been able to stop. Keith Schuler keep him from getting outside. Garner has done a good job running the ball inside against the Gators. And here's what Heath Schuler does to a defense. He stretches you out on the corners and then just makes good athletic plays to get into the end zone. Now Monty Grove does everything he can to stop the momentum, but Schuler too strong. Tennessee 
kicking off again to Florida early in the fourth quarter, now leading by 24 points. The Volunteers were, what, a four-and-a-half point underdog. Ball splashes at the 17, picked up by freshman Jack Jackson. Jackson is buried by three or four Tennessee defenders at the 24-yard line. Tennessee scoring summary. Five plays and 19 yards. Schuler carrying the football in, his second touchdown run of the afternoon. Florida has a new quarterback, sophomore Terry Dean. Long afternoon for Shane Matthews. Florida's offense. As Daryl Frazier gets the handoff, Frazier is upended at the 22-yard line. Then tally on the bottom of the stack. Florida's offense has not been able to keep Tennessee out of the backfield. The offensive line, and despite the fact that Tennessee has used primarily a four-man rush all day, they have been in the backfield all afternoon. Being a sophomore from Naples, heavily recruited quarterback with excellent credentials both athletically and academically. The end around to Aubrey Hill and the Tennessee defense is swayed on this play and Hill uh, may have gotten the first down. He's close to that mark at the 34 yard line. I understand Terry Dean has only had one class at the University of Florida where he didn't make an A and he made a B plus in that one. Took that professor a lot of courage, I'm sure, to give him a B-plus instead of an A. But Terry Dina, brilliant student and an excellent ball player, has rarely had a chance to play as Shane Matthews has had such great success, but Coach Brewer giving him an opportunity here as this ball game's gotten out of hand. Gators did not get the first down, but I think they got it here on third and one. Quarterback keeper. Dean coming into this season, only six of ten completions for 103 yards, a touchdown, an interception. He gets the first down of the 31, or rather the 36. And off to Frazier. Frazier hit behind the line of scrimmage and driven down. Once again, the play of Yatkowski. He has had a big second half for Tennessee. Paul Yatkowski, a junior college transfer. Uh, that whole front four uh, really has dominated the ball game for Tennessee and really given them the edge that's made the difference in this ball game with. The turnovers, of course, the blocked punt and the failed fake punt. Now it is going to be third and about 16. Well, what can you do but just laugh at times? Now he, he can't believe they they weren't able to make the exchange. You know, just. To get the play started, they weren't able to get that part done. Clock is down to one, and the Gators have used up the 25-second clock. One quarterback without much experience, Terry Dean, trying to all the play and audibleized at the line of scrimmage just ran out of time. Now, Tennessee's defense lost a lot of people from last year, and they have apparently found some people to fill in the plugs. 11.03 left in the fourth. Tennessee 31, Florida 7. Third down, and a penalty flag goes down. A play stuffed by the Volunteers. And a clip and on the quarterback. The yeah, I think so. Tullus broke it up. Oh, well behind the line. Oh, 
An illegal block in the back on the offense. Florida will be punting now. Let's check with Steve Babick on the sideline, which I think is uh, perhaps a more not too good news for the Gators. That, that's the situation, David. Carlton Miles suffered a shoulder burner. The pads are off. He's going to be out, obviously, the rest of the game for cautionary reasons. So it's been a tough day for the Gators. Bumps and bruises have caught up to some of the offensive guys now on defense to Carlton Miles. Uh, it's the mental bumps and bruises that you take in a game like this, though, that hurt the most. Uh, when you get thrashed and pounded, like Tennessee has done to the Gators this afternoon, that, that's what hurts most of all. That's very difficult to overcome. Line drive kick. Summers has been a factor in this game. This time he gets about a six or seven yard return near midfield. Tennessee has had the field position in the second half. 40 yard kick by Edge. Volunteers have it near midfield with 10.27 left in the fourth quarter. Still a lot of time left in this game. Yeah, the key is don't let it get worse. I mean, you know, try and salvage something out of this ball game. Obviously, Tennessee in a commanding lead at 31 to 7, but it could get it could get worse with plenty of time to go. Steve Spurrier grew up. Just up the road here, up in Johnson City, Tennessee. Been a rude homecoming again for the University of Florida's head coach. We have a new quarterback for the Volunteers, Jerry Colquitt. He and Schuler came into the season 50-50 as far as the quarterbacking job is concerned. In fact, I think Colquitt got more snaps than Schuler against Southwestern Louisiana. Well, they equally divided the time, but Schuler won the job last week against Georgia, and Colquitt is now the backup. And I think Schuler kept the job this afternoon, too. Uh, obviously replacing Andy Kelly, an all-star here at Tennessee for three years. Was thought to be a difficult situation, but Schuler has really done a terrific job early in the 92 campaign and solidified his position as number one. Colquitt goes to the backup. Let's take a look at the scoring summary in this afternoon's game. Tennessee went on top in the first period after a block punt. And then went up 14 to nothing on Stewart's 16-yard run. Matthews to Hill. That made it 14 to 7. And then at the end of the first half, it was 17-7. A handoff to Aaron Hayden. It was sort of a forgotten man, the way Charlie Garner has played this afternoon. Second half scoring summary. Tennessee then uh, increases its lead to 24-7 on a 66-yard pass play and then 31-7 on Heath Schuler's eight-yard run. Gators have been shut out in the second half. Colquitt, after the Southwest Louisiana game, the opener, has not played very much. In fact, I do not think he played at all last week against Georgia. So those numbers you saw there, indicative of what he did against the Raging Cajuns in week one. He's a local player out of Oak Ridge, Tennessee. Hayden, the ball carrier to the 45 of the Gators. That will bring up a third down and five. Clock running, 9.33. The Volunteers using up that clock, protecting a commanding lead here in Knoxville. And the Gators fighting for their lives here as Tennessee has hardly been stopped at all in the second half. Tennessee lost defensive players Dale Carter, Jeremy Lincoln, Chris Mims, Casey Rogers, Chuck Smith, tackles Kerry Bailey. They lost some fine players from last year, but you really have to tip your hat to their defense today. Hayden picks up the first down. The ball squirted out of there, and let's see if they rule it dead. Now they give it to Florida this time. The Gators' Monty Grove falls on it at the 38-yard line. You know, that uh, makes you wonder if the game would have gone as it has had uh, the fumble early in the third quarter been given to Florida, Jim. Yeah, that would have been a big play. Uh, the first series of the second half, the Gators would have had the ball on the 10-yard line instead of getting it via the punt on their own 50, which they weren't able to get anything done there, but... 
Tennessee has just manhandled the Sparta team pretty much throughout the entire ball game. Play is blown dead as Dean steps out of pressure. Penalty marker was down on the snap. The Tennessee still has uh, Mississippi State. Well, that was last year. Let me look at this year's schedule. They don't play Mississippi State this year, do they? No. They've got LSU and Baton Rouge. They've got Alabama here in Knoxville. And they play Kentucky and Vanderbilt late in the season. South Carolina and Columbia. Again, Tennessee's defense swarming to the football as Bilkey is the ball carrier, the fullback. Reggie Ingram on the bottom of the stack for the Volunteers. We stand in the open, Jim, that the winner of this game would be in the driver's seat to win the Eastern Division Championship. Get into that championship game in Birmingham in early December, and the Volunteers apparently are going to be that team. Dean's pass is picked off. Jason Parker, a freshman out of Garland, Texas, and a true freshman with the interception. Jason Parker does a great job of reading the eyes of quarterback Terry Dean, who looks at the receiver the entire way, and the safety who's playing center field jumps in front of J.J. McCleskey. The wide receiver converted to defense. Another two, two unrealistic a goal for the Miami Heat with the Celtics apparently on the way down a bit. Nick's still a formidable opponent. Right there is a disappointed and very unhappy, I'm sure, head coach. Well, he has lost to Syracuse, Notre Dame, Florida State, Tennessee one time, and now it looks like Tennessee twice. Four defeats in two plus seasons coming into this game. And he'll have to regroup this University of Florida football team and get ready for Mississippi State. Polk would hand it off to the fullback, and Phillips gets about three yards to the 36 yard line. Fortunately for the Gators' uh, mental outlook, they have a week off before they play a Thursday night game in Starkville, so that week off will perhaps allow them to shake the memories of this nightmare in Knoxville and regroup. Mississippi State is a good football oh, team. Oh, yeah. Good to excellent. And uh, really tough in Starkville, a place that the Gators have not been to in some time. Mississippi State played the Gators in Tampa and Orlando most recently when it was, in fact, a, a home game for them. They opted to play at the quasi-neutral site to get an exceptional payoff for their athletic department. But uh, when you go to Starkville, those dogs will be ready. But that week off does give the Gators the chance to regroup. It looks like they're going to need it to get some people well. There have been some injuries in this game. Nothing serious, apparently, unless the Miles situation is one that could linger on. Now the Gators will take a gigantic tumble in the polls as well. Colquitt will keep the football, looking for the first down, and he is close inside the 30, taken out of bounds at the 29-yard line by Bill Gunner. Gators just not able to contain the quarterback on the sprint out. That lead blocker and the blocking they're able to get at the point of attack and the talented running ability of their quarterbacks just too much for that Gator defense this afternoon. Tennessee continually getting outside on the corner. Tennessee will go for the first down on fourth and less than a yard at the 29 yard line of the Gators. Not much of a gamble here. They're up by 24 points and even if they don't get the first down Florida does not have good field position but they do get the first down as Stewart crashes over the top.
Well, maybe I spoke too soon. Florida thinks they've stopped the Tennessee progress, and apparently they have. Well, it didn't even look like it was close no, from here. Didn't. Looked like Stewart went over the top easily. Easily. But Florida but will take any break they can get at this point. Well, let's uh, let you be the judge here. James Stewart. Hit by Anderson behind the line. He needed to get just inside the 29. I don't know. It looked like uh, looked like he had it made. Play action. Dean fires over the middle. The pass is incomplete. And intended for Jeremy Kennedy. Freshman tight end. A redshirt freshman from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Speaking of Florida and Mississippi State, Jim, the Gators have not played in Starkville since 1986. Yeah, I they lost that time. game 16 to 10. <laughs> Dean. Protection breaks down. Dean breaks out of the pocket. Down he goes at the 35. A gain of six. It'll be third and four. Ron Jenkins, a backup defensive back on the tackle as Tennessee is substituted liberally now on defense. The rain has stopped. But the Gators have little time with which to try and come back from a 24 point deficit. Dean has a man wide open and a short hop the intended receiver Sorola Palmer and that'll bring up a fourth down punting situation Dean taps his chest as if to say my fault yeah he just did not get enough zip on it he thought he had obviously but the ball skipped quite a distance in front of the receiver. Shane Edge to punt the ball on fourth down. Summers called for fair catch and makes it at the 33. That's where Tennessee takes over the football. With 5.28 on the clock. Volunteers leading Florida 31 to 7. Tennessee will play next week here homecoming against the University of Cincinnati and then they go to Baton Rouge and play LSU. They've got Arkansas here in Knoxville Alabama here in Knoxville and in South Carolina and Columbia Kentucky here in Knoxville and Vanderbilt over in Nashville. It's a fairly favorable schedule from here on out for Tennessee. Yeah, all the heavy lifting got done early for Tennessee at Georgia a tough place to play obviously and coming up with a big victory and then winning at home when they have to and convincingly to say the least over the Gators 31 to 7 as the score stands right now with uh, shade over five minutes to go. Well, Tennessee likely will move inside the top 10. Florida probably will move outside the top 10. In fact they might pretty much swap positions. Tennessee may not go as high as four but probably get inside the top seven or eight. After an impressive win here today against Florida. Tennessee's defense. A lot of smiling faces over there on that side of the field. With number 48, J.J. Surlis looking up into the stands and uh, celebrating what appears to be a big Tennessee victory. Shane Matthews back to the drawing board for the offensive unit. Everett, Houston, Matthews, Jack Jackson. It's a bit of bewilderment along that uh, well, they ran line. up and down the field in the first period, missed a field goal, and then had the, the punt block. Those two events seem to turn the game into the hands of Tennessee. That is the fullback. And Del Spear. In on the stop, Mose Phillips. The ball carrier, Tennessee's Jerry Colquitt. 
Still the quarterback. Well, most of the Tennessee fans are still in the stadium. Yeah, and they're having a good time as well. They should. They've gotten that Gator Jaws chair down pretty well, but this time. They're resting right now, the fans are. And off again of the fullback. They have given it to the fullback a lot this afternoon, haven't they? Well, when you have a 31 to 7 lead, even, I think they're more prone to do that, but well, even when you're they, right. When it was in Earlier in they did uh, try with a quick hit, and that's a play that the Gators had shut down as Kentucky had tried it. You know, the, you stop the fullback and in that option attack of Kentucky, and you've uh, helped yourself considerably. But uh, this was a different uh, offense they faced today, and Tennessee is just too strong. And they were able to take advantage of some big uh, changes in field position. Tennessee gets the first down as Stewart carries it over the 45 to the 46. And maybe all those young players uh, on the road for the first time for the Gators will uh, perform a little better the next time they step away from Gainesville. Well, you don't play uh, two games in a season you play 11 so there's a lot more football to be played a lot of important football to be played and the best you can do in a losing situation is at least learn from it. Tennessee keeps the ball and keeps the clock running three and a half minutes left in the game. But Tennessee will make a trip to Gainesville next year and. Colquitt shows some good foot speed and marches to the 45 yard line of Florida before Johnny Church. Number 40 true freshman out of Fort Myers makes this stop for the Gators. This is going to be a great rivalry with the new divisional alignment. It's already a good rivalry but uh, could get a little testy in the future. <laughs> you know with the way these teams have embarrassed each other. From time to time and. And there hasn't been a close game between the two teams in recent years, has no. it? It's 45 to 3 here two years ago, 35 to 18 in Gainesville last year, 31 to 4 here. I'm sure, Jim, you remember the 1984 game when the two teams ran up and down the field in a 43 to 30 Florida win. That was one of the more exciting college games I can recall. Yeah, Kerwin Bell for the Gators and Tony Robinson for Tennessee. They piled up over a thousand yards in that ball game. Some huge plays on offense. Dead ball foul, the layup game offense. Neil Anderson ran for almost 180 yards that afternoon, which is one of the better individual rushing performances in Florida football history. John L. Williams had a, I think he had a close to a hundred yard game, if not a hundred yard game on that day also. Not a bad backfield, Neil Anderson and John L. Williams. Ricky Nateel and Frankie Neal were the wide receivers. Tennessee almost gets the first down at the 46 yard line. Clock winding down here, 215. Left in the football game. Tennessee led 17 to 7 at the half. And they have scored two second half touchdowns. And a driving rain earlier in the second half. The Gators have not established anything in the second half offensively. Never got going. That was the Gators that needed the two touchdowns in the second half, not Tennessee, but it wasn't to be this afternoon as the Volunteers have had a great ball game. James Stewart fumbled the football, and Florida's got the ball. The Gators' Lawrence Wright fell on it before he got out of bounds. Good play by Wright. Stewart got stripped as he was trying to lean upfield, and before his knee went down, they stripped the ball away. So here comes the Florida offense on the field again. The Gators are going to go with, uh, I think, Dean at quarterback once again. No, I think it's Antoine Childs, the uh, young freshman from Lauderdale Lakes, Florida. Yeah, you're right. Child 13 is on to play quarterback. He and Dean were locked in a 
tight battle for the backup spot behind Matthews all throughout the preseason. Charles had his moments, but Dean was just a little bit better. They were both very impressive in preseason workouts. Child's throwing and really shows a good arm there and a pass is caught at the 46 yard line. Pass is caught. I'm not sure who 28 is for the Gators. Maybe we can get, get a close up look. He is not on the two deep or even the three deep. Gators get a first down. At the 46 yard line. That's Chris Doring, freshman from Gainesville. Who made the catch for the Gators with 114 left in the football game. Giles steps out of bounds. Doring, I think, played at PK Young. Yeah, I nice saw a, a scrimmage in the preseason. Doring made about four terrific catches. Got great hands, good size on him. There he is, Chris Doring. He's got some mannerisms like Chris Collins. Yeah, work. he does. That would be nice, wouldn't it? <laughs> we could reincarnate Chris Collinsworth. And off to Daryl Frazier. Frazier across the 50 to the 48. 105 left. Tennessee is going to move to 3-0, and and Florida will even up at 1-1 and with Mississippi State on the horizon. Third down for the Gators. Giles threw it behind the intended receiver, Frazier, and that'll bring up fourth down. And only 31 seconds left in the game. Gators came into this game with very high hopes, a lot of confidence. They felt like a lot of questions had been answered. Last week against Kentucky, questions about the offensive line. You really cannot fault Florida's defense too much, although there were a few missed plays here and there, but offensively, Florida just has not gotten it going. Frazier has sprinter speed, and he is into the end zone for the touchdown. Shovel pass. And Frazier just outran the defense to the goal line. And there's a little happy situation for the Florida coaches in an otherwise dismal afternoon. He's glad to see Frazier score the touchdown, I'm sure. Former walk-on out of Winter Haven. That'll go as a touchdown pass, Morning for Childs, a little shovel pass. Uh, yeah, it has to because if the forward pass, it's a pass. Yeah. Uh, that makes it 31 to 13. Edmiston with the extra point try. It is good, and the score is 31 to 14 with 20 seconds left. The Gators get a little old by the way touchdown. Late in the fourth period. Let's take another look. Frazier's the setback behind Childs as the little shuttle pass. They invite the end upfield, and then Frazier simply outruns the uh, defensive pursuit. Once he turns the corner, it's all over. The secondary is was deep in pass coverage. And Spurrier says finally. Something right finally. Frazier's a sprinter on Florida's track team. He was second in the state, 200 meters in high school in 89, coming out of Winter Haven High. So when he got in the open field, they were not going to catch him. That makes the scoreboard look, look a little more respectable, but it's not going to do anything to change the final outcome. Tennessee will get the ball and run the clock out. 
The Gators have lost only two Southeastern Conference games in Steve Spurrier's head coaching career at Florida. And they both against Tennessee. Right here on this field. Arna will be kicking it off to the Volunteers with only 20 seconds left in the game. And Childs gets his first touchdown pass for the Gators, and Frazier gets his first touchdown for the Gators as well here late in the fourth period. Ryan Ruland, the kickoff man, and the Gators try the onside kick. And it did not go the required 10 yards. Tennessee falls on it anyhow at the 44 yard line. So Tennessee takes the football. 20 seconds left. But Tennessee may not have uh, totally deserved uh, last week's victory against Georgia. There are a lot of people that feel like the Bulldogs handed that one to them with six turnovers, but. They have played a very, very good game today against Florida. Yeah, no doubt about this one. The best team on the field all afternoon was the Tennessee Volunteers. And you only get one shot in football at each other, so it was Tennessee's day. Steve Spurrier headed across the field to shake hands with interim coach Philip Fulmer. And that's one of the big stories developing in college football. The job that Fulmer has done with Johnny Majors on the sidelines. He's a popular guy, Fulmer, among his players and the fans here in Knoxville. And I guarantee you his popularity has gone up here this afternoon with this victory over the Florida Gators. Big win for Tennessee. 31 to 14, the final score. We'll be back. Final score, Tennessee 31, Florida 14. College football and football in general, Jim Yarbrough, a, a game of breaks, and Tennessee had some breaks this afternoon. They made a lot of them happen. They blocked a punt. There was a fumble uh, that the Gators did not get credit for early in the third quarter, a big break that went Tennessee's way that looked like it might have been a fumble that would have given the Gators the ball at about the 10-yard line in a 17-7 game. Uh, but you have to give Tennessee an awful lot of credit for this victory today because... Uh, they were, as you said, the better team this afternoon. Well, the other word to use, I think, is execution. Tennessee was able to execute their running game to the extent that uh, they were able to eat up uh, yardage and uh, score on some major drives uh, during the ball game and then take advantage of those, uh, the block punt and, and some other opportunities that were presented to them. I think Tennessee got some national respect today. You know, they got a lot of respect in the Southeast last week with that win over Georgia, but uh, this is a team that... Uh, uh, could be one of the top teams in the country. It's hard to say. We thought they were rebuilding, but you used the word reload, and I think that's true. I, 